All right, guys, I'm working on the clutch pack for the rear end, and I came across something very interesting that I wanted to document to share. So here is my old clutch pack, and here is the configuration that I found it in. <clears throat> Up against the carrier, this is from the driver's side, was the shim, a clutch plate, two steel plates that are practically welded together it feels like another clutch plate two more steel plates and then another clutch plate but take a look at this look at this clutch plate you can see how all the material is worn away and only I'd say sixty percent of the actual clutch plate was making contact with the gear So here's the gear, and here's the surface area for the gear. So this is the contact that was being made. And you can see it just slam wore that clutch plate down and then didn't touch the outer edge. So this is an improper configuration for this 8.8 .8, uh, for that specific reason. Um, the optimal shim pack, for, for a new shim pack, the optimal thickness is 655 thousandths. Uh, this particular pack measured uh, 0.6435. So uh, when it went in, perhaps it could have been, you know, the proper thickness, but over time it, got, it wore down and uh, it's not obviously the proper thickness now. And there's a good 10, 15 thousandths in there that isn't accounted for where the gear was rubbing up against that. So I'm going to show you the proper configuration for the clutch packs. Okay, the proper configuration for the clutch packs. Now this is the same exact side. You're going to have your shim up against the carrier. Now these are brand new. These are the Ford uh, Motorcraft. Part number M-4700-B, the 8.8 .8 track lock kit. So shim fiber, steel, fiber, two steels, a fiber, and a steel. And the reason behind that, it gives you your three clutch plates and then it lets the steel ride up against the gear. So you're gonna wear your clutch packs evenly. You're not gonna run into the issue that I just showed you. So that's going to be the proper configuration. Um, I did some research and it looks like whoever set this rear end up uh, might have been an old school guy because the, the two steels in the middle is a common practice in the 80s for the traction lock. And this is the proper configuration for, for the mid-90s. So once again, that is shim, clutch plate or fiber, steel, clutch plate, steel, steel clutch plate. Uh, these have been soaking in friction modifier for about an hour um, so it really really stinks in here. So to measure your clutch pack take all your components including your shim and you want to put them in a C-clamp. Uh, I'm missing a steel. So to measure your shim pack go ahead and take all your components including your shim and put them in a C-clamp you don't got to tighten it down too much, but you're just mimicking the uh, the spring inside the carrier. You're putting tension on the pack so that you can get an accurate measurement when it's under tension. I'm trying to keep my calipers clean here, as clean as I can. So with a with a thirty five thousandths. The, the pack came with two thirty thousandths, two thirty five thousandths, and two forty thousandths. And I tried uh, all three, and with the thirty five thousandths, that puts my pack at uh, sixty five thirty five. So I'm about thirty five thousandths over, which is not terrible. You can always you can go a little thicker as long as you can get your spring back in there. You're just going to get a little extra you're gonna get a little extra grab out of your traction lock. 
So we're going to go ahead and put these in the carrier and then uh, start working on the rest. All right, I'm gonna go measure out the pack for the other side. All right, I got my second pack set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and measure it. This is at point six five zero zero, right in that range. A little bit. We're going to add a larger shim to this one. So we're going to take out the thirty five and put it on forty. Now we're at six five four zero. We're gonna go with that. All right. So remember, steel plate goes up against your gear. And your shim goes up against your carrier. Alright, gonna put it on its side to prevent it from falling out while I put the gears back in, the spider gears. So, when you're putting your spider gears back in, it's very important that you line them up precisely. So, um, I'm gonna go grab the, the cross pin and uh, gonna slide that back in to make sure these are lined up on the same exact teeth. Alright, we've got our cross pin. We are going to slide that in the same orientation that it's going to go in so here's the hole for the cross pin bolt so cross pin spider gear on the other side and now I've got them lined up precisely so I'm going to pull the pin out and then spin the gears so that the spider gears stay locked into place. All right, spider gears are in. Just going to double check here. Going to slide the pin in through the hole. Line that, line that up. Make sure it slides all the way through. You don't want to do this once you're under the car. So now I know those are lined up good. So it's time to reinstall the spring. All right, the best method that I have seen for reinstalling this, for reinstalling this spring, happens over at the vise. So go ahead and put your spring in the vise. You want to compress this inside part of the spring with this part of the spring right here. You should be wearing eye protection when you do this because this spring can really get away from you if you're not careful.
All right, we got those touching. I'm going to grab a pair of needle nose vice grips. Go ahead and clamp up your spring just like that. A couple good whacks will get it seated. You can see if you can get your vice grips out. and just keep tapping on that until you can get this pin lined up. You might have to go back and forth a couple times either direction. Looks like I drove it too far. There it goes. So the spring is lined up perfectly. The pin, the cross pin slides freely through the spring. Alright, this carrier is ready to go back into the truck.